Hi everyone, this is the beginning of our CMake series. So one of the popular videos I have out there is why CMake and it explains why it exists. And I'm going to give you in a nutshell for this video why it exists in case this is the first video you're starting with. It exists so that you don't need to type in all of this command line logic to be able to build your programs. And that's basically it. You write up a build file of all the things you want it to do every single time and it automatically does it for you. Great, so what tools do you need to get started with CMake? All the examples I will be using are going to be using C++. You can use other languages as well. However, I'm not going to go into great depth on those languages. Also, as an ex uh, for all my examples, I will be using Visual Studio Code. If you'd like to follow along, please use Visual Studio Code as well um, for the best experience possible. <laughs> and lastly, today we're also going to do a Hello CMake. To make CMake work, obviously we need code, so my examples will be in C++. However, this is not going to be a C++ tutorial series. So if you would like to learn more about C++, I actually have another series on that. So please look into that. All right, so let's get started. We already talked about what it is. Tools you'll need are these. I'm creating a new terminal here. I'm on Linux Mint, which is a derivative of Ubuntu, which is a derivative of Debian. So we use apt and we will install build. If you're new to the command line, tab is an autocomplete feature. If you hit it twice, it'll give you all the options. If you're far enough along that if you hit it once, it'll autocomplete for you. We'll do G++, GDB, CMake. I also like to use Ninja Build. All right. And I have them all, and hopefully now you have them all also. So we have uh, Visual Studio Code running here, and some of the extensions I'm using are the C++ extension pack from Microsoft, which will automatically install these other things. Also have CMake so that, well, that's the purpose. We're going to be writing CMake files, so we want them to highlight properly. CMake Tools is a very handy thing. And these other extensions I have don't necessarily pertain to CMake, um, except one I do like to use is the Visual Studio Key Map so that I can use the same hotkeys as regular Visual Studio. However, if you have other editors that you prefer, there's lots of different key mappings. Anyway, let's get started. So we're going to create CMake lists.txt. In Visual Studio Code, you can see it turns into a blue M. That means that it is a CMake, valid CMake file. That's how you know you spelled everything correctly. And we're going to have to specify a minimum version. So we'll do CMake minimum required, put in version, and I'm going to just use version 3. If you go to CMake's website, it will tell you if there's a specific tool that you want, which version to use. Three would be kind of like the baseline that I would say start out with. And then if there is something that you want from a newer version, you absolutely can use it. It's not like the difference between Python 2 and Python 3 where there's huge breaking changes and it's not backwards compatible. There's nothing like that. So you don't have to worry about that. Next, we have to specify a project. So we'll do a project and we will name it hello. This is also going to be the name of our executable. Speaking of executables, let's add one. Add executable. I'm going to use the variable project name so that I don't have to type in and change whenever I change the name of my project. It'll automatically be reflected here and we'll say main.cpp. Well, if you're astute, you'll notice we don't have a main.cpp yet, so we will create one. And we're gonna go as simple as you can get. 
we are going to do a simple hello world program again this is not a C++ tutorial so I am not really going to explain what this code does and why it works just needless to say it will say hello world on our screen so if you want to know more about C++ programming please view that tutorial now you might be thinking I can just run um, G++ and put in main.cpp and we're all good to go and to prove that let's do it look at that we have an a.out and if I run a.out it says hello world so why do we do all this CMake stuff well quite simply because normally you have more than one source file and you have various include files you have uh, perhaps you want to work with different libraries and your G++ gets longer and longer and longer and you have to do them in certain orders and it just becomes a nightmare after a while. Also, this is an in-source build where if we had all of our folders and files, we keep adding all of our build content in the same folder. So that's not usually a good thing. So how do we actually use this CMake list that we made? Well, if we hit F1 or Control Shift P, we'll get our dropdown of all the different things we can use. If we type CMake, one of them is configure. So let's run that. You'll notice that this fancy little toolbar has appeared at the bottom here. That's handy. And we're gonna pick our GCC compiler. It just did a bunch of stuff for us. Great. I do not want to configure this project because I just did. All right. So with CMake, we have a few different things here too. We have debug, which allows us to actually step through our code. We'll illustrate that very briefly. We have the ability to do release, which is designed for speed and all the debug information is gone, which means smaller executables. And then also it can do things like make it the smallest possible binary and give us speed with debug info and etc. We'll leave it at debug. That's fine. If we click here, we can change our compiler. We're already happy with our compiler. If we click build, you can see we have exit code zero, which means everything worked great for us. And just to illustrate how the program runs, you can click the run button. It says hello world that's all fine and dandy you'll notice that our build was all done inside of a build folder this was automatically created for us by CMake tools and if we want to step through our code there's not much here but if we click the little debugger we have the ability to debug through the GUI we can step over we can stop we can keep going till we hit another breakpoint or the program ends um, one caveat with the restart is you need to build in between. Um, so if you make changes and think you can click restart and it'll build for you, that will not happen. Um, you'll figure that out pretty quickly when your new code doesn't work. We also can step into and step out of. Not going to get into all the debugging stuff right now. Just needless to say, you can debug by clicking the little bug. So you can see it did a lot of work for you. All right, well, we wrote the most basic CMake list possible. Oh yeah, it was supposed to say hello CMake, right? Oh, we can fix that. Run hello CMake. There we go. So we look forward to seeing you in the next video.